This video is sponsored by Deep Cut Studios. For a wide range of fantastic gaming resources such as battle mats, dice trays, and pre painted bases, check out the description below. My friend, I bet while you were walking over here, you heard the news he's screaming about another successful and perfectly executed monster hunt. One headed by the prestigious Ortega clan. A hunt that showed the skills and efficiency of the guild. I'm gonna assume you thought it was a usual guild propaganda. And most of the time, you would be right. But in this case, it was 100% truthful. The Ortega clan are one of, if not the best, monster hunters around. And the leader of this clan of elite fighters is Perdita Ortega. Of course, she didn't start out that way. Years ago, when the breach opened for the second time, the guild put out a call for anyone willing to head through the breach and hunt monsters for good money. The then very poor Ortega family pooled all their money together to buy the ticket to send the eldest son, Francisco, through. Perdita, feeling the call of adventure and perhaps a bit angry about not getting picked, stole the ticket and went through the breach herself. She was talented, able to kill nightmares that would have felled more established hunters with relative ease. And over time, she gained the skills and experience to match. One of her greatest achievements was the live capture of a Neverborn, a feat few have ever accomplished. The thing is still in her compound, bound by magical chains that force it to obey her and spill all of its secrets. Eventually, Perdita made enough money to bring the rest of her family through the breach, and each one of them quickly made a name for themselves as well. Now you would think that Francisco Ortega would still be angry about his sister taking his ticket to Malifaux, and at first he was. But after witnessing Perdita's skills and her business acumen, he was humble enough to admit she was probably a better leader than he could ever be. So when he was given the choice to take the role of family head, he declined. Free from the burden of responsibility, he put his full attention on his real passion, sword play, becoming one of the greatest swordsmen in Malifaux, who, as far as I know, has never been beaten in a duel. A man with a seeming lack of self-preservation, Santiago Ortega can be found yelling and cursing his lungs out as he strides towards his enemies, almost daring bullets to hit him as more sensible people die for cover. That combined with his habit of shooting his guns like a wild man, make many believe there is something seriously wrong with him, but I don't think so. Most of these supposedly wild shots always seem to find the target, and as for the yelling and cursing, it makes him a perfect distraction so that other members of the family can go in for the kill. Members like Nino Ortega, a bit of a stealthy sort, he's usually the first to head where the action's gonna be, looking for the perfect spot to position himself, so that when the rest of the family comes in to fight, he's in the back taking out folks with some well-aimed shots. Papa Loco, as he's known now anyway, was originally the wise patriarch of the Ortega family, but something must have happened because one day the family just dumped him at Malifaux Asylum, the old man as loco as his name suggests. Although the doctors tried to help, nothing seemed to do the trick, and the fact that Papa Loco kept creating explosive from whatever was handy meant no one was willing to stop him when he decided to head back to the Ortega's Latigo Ranch. Nowadays he hangs out at the ranch and occasionally goes out on monster hunts with the rest of the family, whether they want him to or not. And whenever the Ortegas head back to their ranch, they can expect a well-cooked meal by Abuela Ortega, the old woman laying down place while reviewing the family's recent kills. Although seeming to be just an old woman with a habit of hitting anyone she considers lazy with a wooden spoon, the way she wields a shotgun strapped to her chair shows that this is one granny you do not want to mess with. With her family, her pistolero de latigos, and monster hunters at her back, I have a feeling the legend of Perdita Ortega and the Ortega clan is just gonna keep on growing. Hi guys, welcome back to our Malifaux Masters Breakdown, where we showcase the factions and personalities vying for soul stones and dominance in the Broken City. Today's episode features the gunslinging Neverborn hunter Perdita Ortega and her guild faction family keyword. The Ortega family excel at range combat and damage, making copious use of the focus condition to ensure their survivability and strong damage flips. Perdita's kin are also proficient in out-of-activation actions, which can make good use of their effective attacks and triggers. 
The Ortegas are effective at combining movement and focus with their concentrate actions thanks to the Bravado ability, which grants a 4-inch push towards an enemy model whenever the aforementioned action is taken. This ability can be clutch for moving into and out of trouble, and dovetails excellently with the App or L skill, which allows a lower-costed family model within 6 inches to pitch a card to take an action after an ally with this rule ends its activation. Naturally, this action could be to concentrate, to move, scheme, pile in more damage wherever you need it the most. Finally, many of the keyword possess the Family Values trigger, which grants another friendly model within 6 inches either card draw or a concentrate once per activation which can facilitate both of the aforementioned abilities to create a dynamic playstyle on the battlefield. Leading the gunline for the Ortegas is the shooting savant herself, Perdita, who all but lives up to her reputation thanks to her stat 7 shooting attack and the expert shot on gunfighter abilities, ensuring she can get a shot off in any situation she needs. Perdita is best known for her cut down to size ability, which grants a positive flip on damage flips against full health enemies. The Master has an effective toolbox within her tactical actions too, being able to refresh her control hand, remove ski markers from range and deter enemies thanks to her finger on the trigger action, which will put off anyone wanting to charge. Expect Perdita to be the front to centre hunting the most dangerous targets while her solid stats and health pool keeps her standing. Accompanying Perdita into battle is her totem, the Enslaved Nephilim, a useful positioning aid for its Master thanks to its frightening reminder bonus action. The Neff retains its keyword ability with its regeneration and pulsing black blood, and can also offset the Ortega's hand drain with its nefarious pact action at the end of each activation. For henchmen options, the family boasts only a single choice in Francisco Ortega, an excellent melee fighter who can dish out heavy damage with his stat 7 balanced sword and the flurry ability to increase his access to the excellent triggers it possesses. Once in combat, Francisco could be a nightmare to deal with thanks to his finesse bonus action and his defensive parry trigger, which can render opposing attacks on a negative and then retaliate with damage respectively. It's not all about the combat though, as the Swordmaster does boast a custom peace bringer for when he needs to join in the ranged firefight. While they may only have a lone henchman, this keyword boasts a bevy of unique and varied enforcer options, starting with the 8 soulstone Santiago an excellent gunfighter with a trigger on every suit of his stat 6 Peacebringer. The big guy also offers some handy condition removal with his sober up action, while his grip frantic and deadly pursuit abilities mean that his dangerousness will only increase as the game goes on. Next up for 7 soul stones is the sniper Nino Ortega, whose signature repeating rifle not only features a built-in positive flip, but also the tome for the family values trigger, which fits nicely with the spotter ability, which allows his aura to cover any range on the board. Nino's From the Shadows allows him advanced deployment, while Sharpshoots can ignore cover and concealment with his rifle. Set him up in a comfy spot midway up the board and he will blast away at will. Alternatively for 7 Soul Stones, you could opt for the more explosive option in Papa Loco, who characteristically offers pulse damage and marker removal with all of his actions. Despite his low willpower, Loco offers solid survivability with his 8 wounds, evasive and grit hardened abilities. But fear not, if he does fall you can make sure he'll take someone with him thanks to his demise explosive pulse of 3 damage over 2 inches. Finally for the name characters is the excellent Abuela Ortega, the matriarch of the family who can facilitate other app or L actions with her nice shot deer encouragement, which grants plus 1 to jewels family members take outside of their activations. Abuela can even push this further with her listen up Youngen bonus action to confer a non-bonus action to an ally within 8 inches while her shotgun and on wheels ability can buy her room to breathe if the enemy gets too close for comfort. Moving over to minions and the aptly named Monster Hunter offers excellent movement with their deadly pursuit ability and creep along action, offering a potential additional 9 inches of movement a turn. Aside from this, the Hunter features excellent triggers on its attack actions, especially its custom firearm. These guys make great flankers to pick off soft targets that their allies have already whittled down earlier in the turn. Finally, for 4 soul stones, the family can bring Pistoleros, nifty incidental damage dealers who offer range scheming with their Fistful of Script ability after a kill. While their revolvers might be somewhat simple, the Pistoleros can actually offer a solid threat thanks to their reckless bonus action, granting them the fast condition and potentially 3 shots a turn. In game terms, the family keyword offers excellent damage output and positioning thanks to their bravado ability. Enemy models cannot ensure their safety simply by an Ortega having activated, as their Eporel will always offer danger of a finishing blow on the horizon. The Ortegas can really benefit from stacking focus on key players such as Perdita and Santiago to maximise their damage output with the custom Peacebringers they wield. 
Schemes and strats that do not require large-scale repositioning play to the strengths of the family, where they can stay relatively close together to get the full benefits of their auras. Additionally, centrally focused objectives allow the keyword to keep themselves at long range until they have decimated opposing forces to score in later turns. Finally, thanks to the variety of excellent enforcer options as well as wider guild choices, the Ortegas make a versatile and responsive keyword option. If you find yourself across the board from the family, then fear not, there are options available for you in order to mitigate their effectiveness. First of which is the abilities that attack their control hand in order to make Aporel a more costly ability. In addition, this ability does give the Ortegas somewhat of a predictability as you will know which the lower costing models are that are left to activate each turn. Furthermore, conditions such as Stunned, Slow and Distracted can go a long way in reducing the overall effectiveness of their ranged attacks, while 2 inch melee beaters can take advantage of the shorter gunfighter span. Finally, effective use of terrain can also force unfavourable duels for Perdita's crew, with cover potentially invaluable for its defensive boost and damage flip reduction that it imposes. If you'd like to take the family out for a spin, then consider the following example list, where Perdita, Santiago and Nino can rain down bullets while the Hunter and Francisco patrol the flanks. The Guild Steward comes in for some handy healing, while Abuela should be on hand to oversee your Apo L candidates to enhance their flips. Once you have these base mechanics down, you can then start to experiment with wider Guild options and tech picks, such as the Pale Rider and Fiona Gage. So that brings us to the end of this Malifaux Master breakdown. We hope it's been useful in giving you a snapshot of its crew and their mechanics. A massive thank you in addition to the vocal talents of the wonderful Arvandus during the video's intro. You can find more of his excellent lore content in the links in the description below. For more talk about Malifaux and its masters, why not check out our podcast, The Harlefaux Show, where we break down each keyword and why you should play it. Alternatively, we have a wealth of beginner-friendly battle reports here on the channel that guide players through every flip and decision. Whichever you choose, we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, folks. Hi guys, thank you very much for watching our content, it means the world to us. If you'd like to see some more videos, they should be over here. And if you'd like to support our channel, keep these lights on. You can find links to our Patreon and merchandise in the description below. See you later.